Welcome to some new r slash malicious compliance stories where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Put a Lock on It. This was a few years back. I'm an electrician by trade and have moved into more technical areas over the years. I started working for this company as a technician, but ended up as lead electrical commissioning engineer. One thing I'd always done from the start was help the old facilities electrician. When he retired, he was never replaced and I just sort of covered the role, bringing in support from outside if it was major work. When we moved to a new location, I was involved with designing and installing much of the electrical and network setup. All good really, and it worked out great for the IT gang, as they were based an hour away, so they could give me a call to reset something or similar. Then we had a new facility manager. A nice guy actually, but very buttoned up and by the book ex-military type. He was getting pressure to smarten things up, and one of the ways to do this was deciding to put a combination lock on the server room door. This set me off as I'd stash my tool bag in there, since I was technically parked at a desk at that point. But he was said that only he and the IT crowd were allowed to know the code. My job often meant I was there at odd hours and the go-to guy if things stopped working. Lots of times I get a call to plug something in or ask if I can network up some kit for testing, monitoring, etc. No problem if it's 9 to 5 weekdays, just drag up the facilities guy and have him open up. But things don't stick to 9 to 5, especially if I'm busy with my real work. So I got to enjoy calling up the facility guy or IT guys to come to the site on weekends etc. After only a couple of these incidents, they just wanted to give me the code. But I refused, citing that it wasn't part of my job description and was good security practice, so I wouldn't circumvent it. Stayed that way till I left, although they did get better at scheduling. The next story is called Work is Cancelled. This happened a few years ago. I had been given a new project at work, which was to install a new type of LED bulb and train signals in place of the old halogen ones. I was doing the project with a guy, let's call him P, short for prick. This guy was universally hated. I had never heard of him before, but I asked what he was like. The first words out of the mouth of anybody who had any dealings with him were, he's a prick, or other more C-based words. Honestly, I've never known somebody to not have one person like them at any level of the company. Also, he had no actual authority over me. It was his project and I was the person actually performing slash supervising the work. Every time I did what he said was mere courtesy. If anything, I was actually a great above him job wise. However, my boss told me to play nice because I was new to the supervisor role. I got a spreadsheet of all the signals that needed the bulbs changed and worked out the staff, the materials and the best course of action to do the work. It was a bad job. You had to change brackets, lamp holders, wiring and nuts slash balls with tools that weren't fit for this purpose. Usually in the wind or rain and up a 20 feet ladder around live electrical equipment. Also I was consistently the last person at work, including my boss's bosses, dealing with all this crap for no extra thanks and no chance of extra pay either. Salaried worker. After doing the job for a while, I got an email from P saying he had planned which signals to change for each shift from now on and I was not allowed to stray from the plan. The plan was dump. Instead of doing signals in a straight line, it was two in this area, two at this area, five miles away, three here, just terribly put together. I told him this was stupid and we needed to do them all in a line and for maybe the first time in his life he saw sense and relented. He then made a new plan with them all in a row, which he said I had to follow. What he failed to realize, because he was incompetent, was the railway has engineering work in specified areas where other works cannot take place in them for safety reasons. The very next shift, what he has listed us to do cannot be done. We cannot access the area. If we did, we would very much get fired. So I looked at the spreadsheet, found an area we could work and work there. This infuriated P and I was told via email to follow his plan to the ladder and to stop being so arrogant. Completing a night's work instead of literally doing nothing was arrogant? Ok fine. The next couple of nights went ok, but then another specified area showed up we couldn't work in. This time we just didn't do the work and I reported back as such because we can't deviate from the plan. This happened multiple times a week. Radio silence from P. At some point P's boss comes out with us to see our work because she hasn't seen this type of work before and we get along great honestly. This was planned in advance, she wasn't keeping an eye on us because we had started to underperform. We get about half of the work done and then start packing up to leave. She asks why. 
I tell her because the next signals are in an area for plant engineering works and we can't go in there. She is okay with that. As I said, if we went in there, we would probably be out of a job. Or worse. Trains moving, high voltage equipment left on, etc. But she then asks why we can't go to another location and work there. I show her the plan and tell her how we are supposed to adhere to it at all costs. She asks why and I ask her if she's seen P's email. She had not, but said she would chase it up during the day. I get a very prickly email from P during the day, asking why I only completed half the work. He had even checked to see what time I had been on track till to tell me I still had 2 hours I could have worked. He cc'd his boss and my boss into the email. He thought he had me, because he was correct. There were 2 hours left before we had to get off track in the section we completed the work. But the cancelled engineering hours in the area for all the other assets made the rest of the work impossible. I was slightly taken aback by this though. While there is a way to check what time people get off track, nobody ever uses it. Because it is such an underhanded thing to do and creates massive distrust with everybody. He is the only person in nearly 20 years at this company I've known to have done it. His manager then called us all into a meeting. Before anybody else could speak, she told Pete the reason half the work was done was that the equipment further along on his plan was in a specified area we are not permitted to work in, regardless of what the stupid hindrance of our plan says. She said he should have looked at what areas we could work at before our shift, instead of spending the time spying on the staff for what time they get off track. Her numbers had me working at 40% above what was expected for the shift when I was in charge, and less than half of what I should be doing when he was making us follow his plan. P tries to talk back, but she says, shut it before you say anything else useless. I then get sent out while she talks to P and my boss in private. The fallout was that the project was getting taken off of P. He was moved on from that world to never have a position with any kind of authority again. She gave my staff and me a much better project to work on, with more overtime, voluntary, a better person to liaise with and the mental image of P looking like a scolded puppy. The last story is called Throw It Away. In high school I worked at a fast food restaurant. Sadly, like many fast food places, we had a lot of waste. However, we had one employee, who we will call Phil, that would take as much waste food as he could carry at the end of the day and ride his bike to a place where a lot of homeless people would hang out and give it to them. Other employees with cars would often take more if he couldn't carry all of it. There was nothing wrong with the food, it was just called waste because it was cooked and not sold. At one point, someone high up in the corporate part of the restaurant decided to try and cut costs by minimizing waste. Their strategy was to require us to throw away all unsold food at the end of the day, with the idea being that employees wouldn't cook extra food to take home, so we would waste less. Now the general manager at this restaurant was very by the book and never deviated from any official rule. The new food waste rules were no exception. She would stand there at the end of the day and watch as the employees put all of the extra food into the trash can. Phil, determined to continue his nightly food donations, found a loophole. Every night right before we close and threw away food, Phil would take the trash out, then put a clean trash bag in the can. So the result was a trash bag of sorted and boxed food, which was even easier for Phil to transport and allowed him to carry more. The people he took the food to were more than happy with the change. To get it out of the restaurant, Phil would volunteer to take out the trash every night, then just take the bag with him when he left rather than put it in the dumpster. This worked pretty well for a while. One night, the general manager saw Phil leaving with the bag on the security cameras. She was a stickler for the rules, so she didn't approve of it. The next day, she called a staff meeting. She told all of us, though we all knew it was directed mostly at Phil, that the waste food trash had to go in the dumpster and that nobody was allowed to take it. That kind of thing. Phil did not care. He continued his routine, albeit with a little more sneaking, until the manager saw him doing it again. Phil was fired for stealing company property or something like that. I don't remember exactly how the general manager phrased it. Several other employees, myself included, quit shortly after and found other places to go. This left the restaurant struggling with fewer employees than it needed. There was also no one experienced enough to train new employees, since the general manager didn't do much as far as food. The employees that quit were mostly the experienced ones. And with that, we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories in today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. 
If you like what I do and would like to support me, please subscribe and hit the like button. And if you want to support me even further, why don't you check out the channel membership? I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.